What's up guys? Hey, Jared Beckstrand here, doctor of physical therapy, toneandtitan.com, and these are going to be the best exercises to strengthen and stabilize your knee, part two. Let's get into them right now. All right, you guys. Hey, thank you so much for joining me today right here on Tone and Titan. I can't wait to share some of this information with you guys. Phase two, knee strength and stabilization exercises coming at you right now. If you do like this video, hit that thumbs up button down below. Also, if you haven't done so already, that red box right in the corner says subscribe on it. Click on that to subscribe to my channel. Okay, you guys, so this comes from um, a lot of comments, a lot of questions that I was getting about knee exercises. What are some good exercises for knee pain? How can I increase knee strength? Things of that nature. As I started to write those down and say, okay, let me film a video around this, that list just kept growing and growing. I decided it just wasn't feasible for one video. I decided to make it into two. If you're looking for the phase one exercises, phase one are very simple exercises to get the quadricep going, um, to just establish kind of a mind-muscle connection, not a lot of motion, definitely no weight bearing. What I want you to do is click this link right up here, or I've got it linked down in the description below. That will take you to the phase one exercises. This is going to be your phase two exercises. Hopefully you've gotten to the point where you're a little bit stronger. Maybe the knee is a little less painful. You want to progress and strengthen even further. That's where this video comes in. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Let's get into those right now. Your first two exercises are going to be for your quadriceps. Those are the muscles in the front. And for your hamstrings, those are the muscles in the back. For the quads, what I want to do is show you a long arc quad. I introduced what we call short arc quads in the last video, where basically you take your knee from about a 15 degree bend to all the way straight. We're just going to work into a bigger range of motion with the first exercise in this video. It's going to be a long arc quad. Long arc meaning I'm going to start with my knee at a 90 degree bend. I'm going to contract these quad muscles right here on the top of my leg to straighten my leg out all the way. Hold that for a two to three second count and then come back down nice and slow. Long arc up and then right back down nice and slow. Now keep in mind there are some conditions that might not like this exercise very much. If you have some patellar tracking issues, if you have some patellar tendonitis, or if you have some arthritis in your knee, this might not be the best exercise for you. If it is painful, I recommend you go back to try those short arc quad exercises. If those are still painful, then just bag this all together. There's other ways that you can that you can strengthen this muscle without having to do this motion. But if that feels good, shoot for a set of 10. If 10 feels good, two sets of 10, up to three sets of 10 on this long arc quad motion. Next, let's stand up and let's do some hamstring curls with it. I typically recommend to people do this at like your kitchen table or your counter or like the back of a sofa, somewhere that's firm and that's not going to move. From here, all I'm going to do is curl my knee up to about a 90 degree and then right back down curl and then come right back down. This is going to hit that hamstring muscle, the muscle that flexes your knee right in the back of your leg. Great exercise for that. It is an open chain activity, meaning my leg is freely swinging as opposed to like a bridge where it's like a closed chain activity. So keep in mind that it is a little bit more aggressive. Again, if it causes any pain, don't worry about doing that. So those are your first two exercises. Next, let's get into some squats. One of my favorite exercises, if you can tolerate it. Keep in mind, it does increase compressive forces in your knee, but it's great as far as hip strengthening and hip mobility are concerned, which are certainly key components in knee strength as well. My feet are about hip width apart. My toes are slightly out. My weight is on my heels. I'm going to hinge at my hips first. A lot of people don't get the hip hinge right. They, they kind of bend forward first. Basically, if my nose gets way out here, my toes get way out over, or excuse me, my knees get way out over my toes, it just increases those compressive forces even more. And so your first motion is to hinge at the hip to set the butt back. And then from that position, we can drop down into a squat. Ideally, I'd like you to go down to thighs parallel. And so to do that, it looks just like this and then right back up. However, if you do have some knee pain going on, the lower that you go, it might increase pain. And so what I want you to do is just go as low as you can without pain. And so if that's even like a little quarter squat and then back up, you're still doing good. You're going to try to perform about 10 reps of that up to two sets and even up to three sets of 10 reps on our squats is what we're shooting for. Um, okay, let's see. Next, we're going to be doing some standing abduction. We introduced some sideline abduction in the last video. Now what I want you to do is you're standing. If you need like a chair or something to hold on to, table, railing, whatever, whatever have you over here, 
please do that, safety first. Just found a foam roller, that's what I'll use to stabilize while I'm doing this. And so I'm gonna be standing on my left leg, I'm gonna put a, a soft band in my left leg, meaning I don't wanna like locked out and stiff. Soft band in that leg, hold on to your support, and then you're gonna use these muscles right here on the right side of your hip to swing it out to the side. It looks just like that. And so we're really trying to focus on these muscles right here to abduct that leg. The thing that I love about this is while we're working this one, while we're the motion is occurring over here, this left hip has to work really hard to stabilize as well. And so this left hip is stabilizing basically the weight of my entire body in order for this to pivot effectively. And so it's a great way that we can actually train both of these abductor muscles with one great motion. So for that reason, if your pain is on that, like that right side of your knee or on that right knee, for example, I want you to do these on both sides. So I would do a set of 10 on the right, switch that over or just turn around to grab onto that table or chair or whatever, soft bend in your right knee, and then we're gonna abduct out to the side. I'd perform 10 on that side, 10 on the other side, and then repeat that up to three times if you can tolerate it. Finally, the last thing that we're gonna do is work on the glutes and the hamstrings. My favorite weight-bearing exercise to do that is going to be a stiff-legged deadlift, um, but we're not gonna use necessarily any weights. You can progress this with weights, but I recommend that you start without them. And so feet are about shoulder width apart. My knees this time are actually locked out. Hinge right here at the hips to bend forward. I don't want your back to round forward, so keep your back nice and flat. You're going to hinge down just as low as those hamstrings will allow you to go. And then use your hamstrings, use your glutes to pull yourself back up to upright. And so it looks just like that. So hinge down, hamstrings and glutes fire to bring me back to upright. Go for a set of 10, if 10 feels good, up to three sets of 10. If that still feels good, you can grab like some light weights to do this exercise as well. Um, one of my favorite exercises to really activate those glutes, to really get those hamstrings going and just improve overall stability in your knee joint. And finally, the last exercise that I like is actually for your calves. So you've got two calf muscles. One of them actually crosses the knee joint in the back. And so if we talk about knee strength, knee stability, you can't neglect that calf muscle to do that. And so let's see, to, strength, to, to train that muscle, it's called your gastrocnemius. I'm going to do some, some heel raises on a stair. You come to a stair, um, ideally you'd have like a railing or something to hold on to. Safety first, stabilize yourself while you're doing this. Let your um, heels fall down below your toes, and then you're gonna contract your calf muscles to come up into a heel raise and then right back down so it looks just like that right there. Up at the top, I like to kind of hold for about a two second count and then come right back down. So up, one, two, and then right back down. Just increases the contraction. And so I tell people, you know, your calves are typically pretty strong. A set of 10 might not be enough. You might actually do these in sets of 15 to 20, but maybe you start with three sets of 10, work up to three sets of 20 if you feel like you can do it. There's your heel raises right there. All right, you guys, so there you have them. Those are six more great exercises to increase strength in your knee, to increase stability at your hip, and hopefully help you out of some of the knee pain that you might be experiencing. If you guys found this video beneficial, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you have any questions or comments about anything that I covered in this video, be sure to leave that in a comment down below. Finally, if you have any suggestions for future videos that you would like to see from Tone and Titan, leave those in a comment down below. I'll do what I can to help you. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, hit this circle button right down here to subscribe to Tone and Titan here on YouTube. If you're looking for those phase one exercises to strengthen your knee, that's the link right there. Tap on that video down there. That's one more that you might benefit from. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.